the Tobago International Academy and all other persons viewing on television or social media platforms. And on my own behalf and that of the members of the Tobago House of Assembly, I extend hearty greetings to the country for the upcoming Indian Arrival Day. Assembly bills are sent back from cabinet. Assembly laws brought back from parliament. Petitions. Papers. Secretary of Finance and the Economy. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. I have the privilege of tab tabling the Tobago House of Assembly's monthly budget report it's at the end of March 2019. Presentation of reports from Dispute Resolution Commission, Select Committees, Code of Conduct, Questions to Secretaries. Question number 68, Minority Councillor. Good afternoon. Uh, question number 68 to the Secretary of Health, Wellness and Family Development. As it relates to the Tobago Regional Health Authority. She's absent. Is there anyone? So is there someone who would be willing to answer? Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. Due to the absence of the Secretary, I would ask for deferral. Can I answer deferral of this question to a subsequent sitting? Question will be deferred to the next sitting. <coughs> question 69, Minority Councillor. Question 69 to the Secretary of Infrastructure, Quarries, and the Environment, who is also the leader of Assembly business. The Mill Shelve project launched in December 2013 was originally estimated to cost $143 million. Please indicate the total cost of the project at the end of December 2017. Please outline the monthly lease cost and the total amount paid as at April 30th, 2019. Outline in details what construction or rehabilitation works and their estimated costs were completed between January 2018 and April 2019 under the purview of the Tobago House of Assembly. And outline in details any ongoing works, including the type of works, the contractor, and the estimated cost at completion and the estimated completion dates. Secretary of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. This project is, does not reside solely and wholly under the Division of Infrastructure as such. I would like to defer the answering of this question to a subsequent sitting. Uh, the question is whether you would want it totally deferred or whether you would accept it in writing. Madam Presiding Officer, given that we seem to not have any specific standing orders pertaining to when questions in writings are presented, I would prefer to have it referred and answered for oral at the next sitting. That's the end of the questions. for leave to move the adjournment of the assembly on definite matters of urgent public importance. Statements by secretaries or assistant secretaries. Personal explanations. Introduction of bills. 
motions relating to the business or sitting of the assembly and moved by a secretary or assistant secretary, public business, executive council business, motion. Assistant Secretary in the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development, and Labor. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to be able to lay in this house a motion of significance such as this. And while I'm on my feet, suffice it to say that I am proud of the accomplishments of this PNM Red Tobago House of Assembly Administration under the stewardship of the great, the venerable, the iconic Kelvin Charles. You see, I feel blessed, Madam Presiding Officer, to be associated with this administration because I've been around sufficiently long to have an appreciation for the fact that we bring to the fore and to the people of Tobago leadership by design and success by definition. And so today, I want to speak to the people of Tobago through this August Assembly in respect of the dream that is Tobago. There is a dream that is Tobago, Madam Presiding Officer. Some may argue that that dream is philosophical, and others might argue that that dream represents a distant reality. But when I consider the manifesto which was presented to the people of Tobago little over two years ago, I have an appreciation for the fact that the dream that is Tobago is not a distant reality, but a present day truth and a present day opportunity. Madam Presiding Officer, the motion calls in its basic sense for this house to support the continued efforts of the Tobago House of Assembly to equip our local entrepreneurs with adequate resources to identify, explore, and to penetrate new markets in order to maximize profitability and to bolster the island's economy. It goes on further. To engage this August Assembly, this Honorable House, to ensure that all private sectors support the continuous thrust of this administration to expand the private sector through the development of the entrepreneurial class. I had an opportunity, Madam Presiding Officer, to examine what is the entrepreneurial class. As the Assistant Secretary in the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor, I understand the importance of entrepreneurship. And so I decided to refine my own conviction through research and through inspection. And I was quickly led to have an appreciation or rather a further appreciation for the role and the work and the functioning of the entrepreneurial class in respect of engineering and developing a robust private sector that can compete in the international arena. To put that in context, Madam Presiding Officer, one must recognize and appreciate the thrust, not just of the Tobago House of Assembly, but of the national, of the national community in respect of our moving from a developing country to a first world country. And so it brings me to my research. According to scholars and economists, 
The concept of the first world country was first engineered in respect of the Cold War and was definitive of all those countries that were aligned to NATO and not the Soviet Union. Over the years, we recognize, according to the known literature and the lived history of the world, that the definition of a first world economy was shifted and now recognizes political systems, well-functioning democracies, a people who have an inherent appreciation for rule of law, in addition to a capitalist economy, economic stability, and high standards of living that represents the interests, the needs, and the values of a people. The rule of thumb in respect to modern ways of determining a first world country includes the GDP, the NGP, literacy rates, life expectancy, and the Human Development Index. And I will speak a little bit in a while about the Human Development Index. You see, Madam Presiding Officer, in the greatest sense of the word, a first world country and a first world economy speaks to a highly developed, highly industrialized way of operation among a people. And when I discovered that or when I had an opportunity to clarify my thinking in respect of that, it was only then that I had an appreciation for the sentiments exposed by former President of the United States of America, Barack Obama, who, in addressing Shogun, as we loosely call it, said, success can only be measured by the ability of a people to live out their full potential. Madam Presiding Officer, Today, I'm pleased to be able to suggest that under the leadership of Kelvin Charles, under the banner of a well-respected, widely, widely acclaimed People's National Movement Administration, Tobago continues to maintain its poise to equip its people to live out their truth of potential. You see, Madam Presiding Officer, there was a time in the history of Trinidad and Tobago when all success was concerned primarily, or perhaps it is safe to say only, with the strength of our agricultural sector. There was a time in the history of Tobago, and in the history, the lived history and the reality of Tobago, when possibilities were connected to the brand associated with a family. So if one was privileged to be born into a certain community of influence or into a certain lineage, one would have been better dispositioned and better poised to establish some and to benefit from certain luxuries. Madam Presiding Officer, little over two years into the operations of this sitting PNM Red Administration, I am pleased to announce to the people of Tobago that Kelvin Charles and his team of secretaries and assistant secretaries have carried the work of improvement further. And so, when it comes to examining the track record of the People's National Movement and of a responsible administration who holds the reign of governance, I think that one ought only to appreciate that we are the ones for whom we have been waiting, and certainly, I wish the camera could follow me, no one else is coming. <laughs> Madam Presiding Officer, I took the time to explain that because I understand that things have context. And yes, we could have come to this house, read the motion as laid, and vote a simple yes or no. But life has taught me that there are a few things that cannot be reduced to a simple response 
that is predicated on the convictions of yes or on the convictions of no. In fact, when it comes to good governance and when it comes to effective leadership, when it comes to managing expectations so that people have an opportunity to live out their fullest potentials in keeping with the values and the ideals that they have of their possibilities, I understand that a simple yes or no is dangerous to democracy. You see, Madam Presiding Officer, I have decided to put that there because I understand no more than ever that there was a time in the world's history when a simple response as yes and no was reserved for only two kinds of people, morons and slaves. Morons and slaves. Simply because things require context. And so the context which, upon which this motion is predicated suggests and rightly articulates that whereas this administration took the strategic decision to align the responsibility of community development and enterprise development for the empowerment of the labor force on the island of Tobago, and whereas enterprise development has been identified as a key strategic vehicle for empowering Tobagonians, building communities, and developing the island's economy, and whereas, and this is important, and whereas this administration has facilitated the acquisition of employable and entrepreneurial skills through a wide range of vocational skills program and, the, and continues to invest in the establishment, development, and success of local businesses, it is important for us to appreciate that the time has come for us to continue along the trajectory of carrying the work of improvement somewhat further. Madam Presiding Officer, as a young man, and I'm talking here about entrepreneurship, as a young man of about six or seven, I used to climb the chenet tree in my father's yard. Kenneth, as we would loosely call it. And if anybody has a practical remembrance of what happens during the summertime or, or, or August, July vacation, July, August vacation, we know that kennep and mango used to be the food of the day. And it used to be for young children the economy of the day. And so I will climb my father's chenet tree and I will pick bunches of chenet skillfully and carefully and I will clean it off and I would bundle it together with string or, 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 or with vine as the case may be. And uh, Corrine, uh, thank you my dear colleague. And I will take it down to Mount Irving Bay and I will sell it there. Now there was a thinking which suggests that my primary market should be the wives, the visitors who came to our shores. But when I examined my live experiences and I reconciled it with my profit margins, I recognized that eight out of every 10 bunches that were sold were sold to locals. Madam Presiding Officer, it helps me to appreciate, an understanding of that helps me to appreciate that there was a time when the very commodities and the very produce that were available to each and every Tobagonian had somewhat of a market value and persons were prepared to invest their resources in attaining it. But unfortunately, nobody told young Shumari Hector that he was an body, a budding and an upcoming businessman. Nobody told the young Shumari Hector that he was an entrepreneur. My dear friends, I stand before you today because I understand the urgency in exposing to people the possibilities of their future. I stand before you today because I understand that the time has come for us to put things in context so that people would know their possibilities and what exists as part of their realities. And so it brings us to present day. Present day, wisdom, as opposed to conventional, suggests 
that the movement of people, goods, services, capital, information, ideals, and even creeds largely characterize the interworld relationship, relationship of developing states. Now, you may wonder why you want to talk about developing states so quickly after he was talking about first world economies and first world countries. Simply, Madam Presiding Officer, because the difference between a developing state and a first world country is the level of industrialization pegged to the economy. In other words, if I cast your attention back to the example that was used of my ability to sell chenets, then you would understand that if there were systems in place back then for me to mass pick and mass sell chenets, then I would have had an industrial state in my father's house. You see, Madam Presiding Officer, it requires vision, it requires foresight, it requires strategic leadership because I could not imagine at the age of six or seven that there will be a day and there will be a market for preserved chenets. You know that? Do you know that chenet is now being preserved, it is now being packaged, and it is now being sold? If anybody had told me that before, I would have said absurdity. But it is the truth. Chenet is now being sold as its preserved tambran, as its plum, as its mangoes, and the likes. I yet to see preserved pomeraka. I've seen preserved papa. But Madam Presiding Officer, and the people of Tobago, or viewing and listening audience, the point I'm getting at is that no more than ever, there is the need for business as unusual. No more than ever. You see, when I was going to school as a young man, I seldom ever got monies to go to the shop or to go to the snacket or to the cafeteria, whatever it was called back then. My mom, for the period of time she was resident on the island of Tobago, my mom prepared or snacks and or treats or lunches and the likes at home, and we took it with us every morning. So I used to get preserved mango, I used to get tambran ball, I used to get sweet bread, I used to get cakes, I used to get pies and the likes. And, and that was done because she understood her responsibility as mother and her duty of care to children. And so she, and Sam Sam, and Sam Sam. And she used to do that out of her obligation to us understanding her responsibility. I did not know then, and I wonder if she had known too, that what she was doing for luxury and out of a sense of duty and responsibility could have translated into income generating possibilities. Madam Presiding Officer, so it comes as no surprise that when my leader took the reins of responsibility for the future of the people of Tobago, that he made certain basic adjustments to reorganize, reclassify, and realign services on the island of Tobago. The Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development, and Labor is one such move in the puzzle of life on the island of Tobago. Formerly known as Community Development and Culture, we recognize from early that there is a connection, there is a dovetailing, a relationship between community development and our contribution towards the quality of life and, 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 the, and the national economy. And so, Madam Presiding Officer, the alignment brought to focus opportunities for income generating capabilities and capacities right in your very communities. And we have the record to show, and I have it now. In fact, it was my assembly colleague, um, member for record up. Yeah, Boko, Boko Mon present, uh, and I uh, 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 dare say Lawrence, who 
brought to my attention, having reviewed the manifesto, that in only two years, we have been able to deliver to the people of Tobago upward of 50% of the things we have told them we would bring to the fore. Upward of 50% that we have told them. And today, we could look back now and examine the literature and permit me to use as, uh, 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 as, as extensions of my presentation the literature before me, Madam Presiding Officer. And I want to examine quickly one of the most controversial entities be known to the Tobago House of Assembly, CPEP. Running a close second is URP, but I will leave that. <laughs> I will leave that for the secretary for, 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 with responsibility for that, most especially since all of Tobago would have had an opportunity to digest my defeat. I will leave that for him. But Madam Presiding Officer, we have taken the decision to align CPEP and labor in the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor so as to position our labor force to buoy the economy of Tobago and the national economy. You see, we have recognized from onset, Madam Presiding Officer, that no country, no government, no people, it can't grow if we only engage the skill sets of men without women, nor can it grow if we engage the skill sets of women independent of men. And I dare translate that into a present day reality and say it cannot grow, and it cannot grow sustainably if we engage the public sector independent of the private sector. Give that a round of applause. Give that a round of applause. You see, Madam Presiding Officer, the history of the world, as is the history of Trinidad and Tobago and more so Tobago, has taught us that any sustainable development that could provide a people with an opportunity to live out their full potential has to be done in harmony with the public sector and the institutions created by state and the private sector and the opportunities created for our people to enjoy. You see, Madam Presiding Officer, so when CPEP was realigned, and I'm putting everything in context because I wanted to understand that context and semantics is a component of effective leadership and good governance. When CPEP was brought into this, um, into this division, Madam Presiding Officer, it was done so on the basis that we will equip the labor force, in particular the field officers in CPEP, with entrepreneurial and employable skills so that it can help them to transition into whatever futures they imagine for themselves, a future that is designed and based on glory and high expectancy. Madam Presiding Officer, I'm happy to admit to the House today that CPEP has been reconfigured and it has now been so configured to ensure that CPEP becomes a revenue generating entity that can lend to the economy of Tobago and the economy of the national community. Give, give, answer, give that a round of applause. <laughs> Let me tell you some of what CPEP has been doing, and this is success by design. CPEP has now engaged a green market so that when they would have planted and they would have harvested and they would have engaged their produce, CPEP is now selling to staff and to the wider community fresh produce as well as compost grow boxes and seedlings for the beautification not just of community spaces but of, of, of people's homes. We could have sat back, we could have said CPEP is a political tool, we could have said the people owe us a depth of gratitude. We could have said that the employment represents um, uh, uh, um, zero to, 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 to semi-skilled employment. We, we could have gone on with the narrative and continued the status quo. But a part of effective leadership is to challenge the status quo and give people hope for an expected end. And that we did as an administration. I could tell you what else is coming on board, and I would expect that people would engage the services. 
CPEP has now moved and is positioning itself to establish a heritage bakery in Rescato. <laughs> a heritage bakery in Rescato. And the bakery will be operational in harmony with the opportunities that would redound or, or that will come rather through the division of tourism, culture, and transportation to ensure that as visitors come, they will be able to make that heritage bakery in Rescato one of the established stop points so that they will be able to see the operations of a dot oven and they will be able to purchase some the produce there and be able to have an appreciation for not just our culture, but our unique heritages and our ways of life. That is leadership. I could go on and on about CPEP, but time, time. How does this then, how does this then dovetail? We came in and we met a situation, Madam Presiding Officer. A situation where, and we know it, we know it. And it is, let me, let, me, let, me, let me put a caveat to ensure that I do not find myself in Baccarat. We came here and met a situation that was nobody's fault, but that is everybody's fault. A situation in which persons would go to work for X time, and they will not be prepared to engage services until two hours has passed, or they are expected to go to work for X time and they do that and they leave half an hour after because they have other commitments and other responsibilities. Madam Presiding Officer, it is evident in the numbers and I can prove it. I will prove it in a while. We had to take pains, Madam Presiding Officer, and my good friend and brother, Councillor with Responsibility for, for Environment, Infrastructure, and the likes, will speak to it somewhat. We had to take pains to ensure that we reverse the operations and the behaviors of the people of Tobago to boost productivity on the island. When we came in, we were speaking about metanoia because we understand that there must be a radical shift in thinking, and because we are all spiritual people, we understand that that shift, or the paradigm shift, must be undergirded by a strong sense of spiritual clarity and expectations. And so, and, and so we had to push back, and we had to challenge the status quo, and we had to combat the eater food mentality, and, and the people who were most critical of us and our operations were the ones who spent the most time at the trough eating the fat of the Tobago House of Assembly. It speaks to political will and the resolve to create a space for all persons to benefit from good governance on the island of Tobago. We did that as an administration. When we came in, Madam Presiding Officer, we had a situation. A situation where in 2016, I'm talking here now, I'm shifting quickly, I'm shifting quickly. In 2016, where did it hit you? Hold on, hold on. Too much of facts and not fiction. And that requires some time to navigate. In 2016, Madam Presiding Officer, we came in and met a situation where the vocational skills training program was struggling to graduate just about 500 persons, um, and the highest recorded at the point in time was 525 persons. In 2017, we were able to move that number to 772 persons, and in 2018, 1,059 persons. What does that suggest? And let me explain it. You remember I said things require context. The people of Tobago are finally coming to the realization that we need to be our own heroes. We need to save ourselves from 
our very selves. You see, Madam Presiding Officer, it is this that allowed for us to be able to engage the loans and grant facilities as persons garnered entrepreneurial skills to be able to improve the quality of their own lives. We didn't just do that. What we also established, Madam Presiding Officer, was a tripartite arrangement amongst the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor, Fisheries, and, and the Secretary calls it loosely works, to ensure that persons have access to training in agriculture and ag agro-processing so that they would be able to use these skills in order to buoy themselves and their possibilities. Madam Presiding Officer, I'm happy to say, I'm happy to say that in cycle one of that arrangement, we were able to train over 100 persons from works and over 100 persons from community development. I am also happy to say that we were able to engage over 100 persons from the wider public to be able to train them and for them to benefit from the services. It means that in cycle one, which spanned less than three months, we were able to empower and equip over 300 people on the island of Tobago to improve their own prospects and to benefit from entrepreneurial skills. Madam Presiding Officer, it means therefore that we have recognized the need to develop a robust private sector on the island of Tobago. We need to develop a robust private sector on the island of Tobago. THA can no longer afford to be the only kid or the main kid on the block. As we speak, Madam Presiding Officer, Assemblyman Marcelin Melville Jack, the Secretary in the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor, is leading a Tobago Roadshow in Trinidad to open markets and possibilities for businessmen and women who are resident on the island of Tobago. Let me, let, me, let me put this in context for you. We've partnered with the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation to ensure that the brand that is Tobago Beyond Ordinary is given some play and some attention to. But we've decided to, 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 to undergird that with strong sentiments which allows for Tobago to be unveiled, discovered, and invested in. At present, Madam Presiding Officer, I'm happy to announce to you that we have 28 Tobago-based businesses and exhibitors right now in Trin City Mall in Trinidad marketing their products, their goods, and their services. That is success. <laughs> In addition to that, we have companies, uh, and the record is showing four. Uh, we, we have four main companies who are also there lending support. And Madam Presiding Officer, the services, the goods, and the likes which are being delivered moves from, 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 from agro-processing items to household items to services and the likes. I can say quickly that we have um, Dixie and Daniel with cheesecakes. We have Les Warner with packaged cocktails. We have Keston Pope with local punches and Tricera Mayers with handmade bags. We have, and I'm very proud of this, we have Edwards Jones with the support brand and products. We have Cafe Dick with confectionery and coconut oils, Pearl Davis with draperies and the likes. And, 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 and we also have Madam Presiding Officer, Jonathan Daniel with smoked meats and Kilian and Nori for events, plannings and the likes. We have decided to extend the value chain from Tobago whose market is just over 60,000 to take it to Trinidad to a market of 1.3 million. 
And if you think, Madam Presiding Officer, that that is all, if you think that that is all, we will be taking a contingent to Cuba, Expo Caribbean, next month to penetrate the Latin advancement to the point of BDU. And let me put it in context so that you can appreciate. In the months of May, and we are talking here about the way forward, we will engage a collaboration with Export TT in respect of packaging and labeling. In the months of June and July, we will be doing pre-funding training for persons who are likely to receive uh, from our loans and grant facilities. In the months of August, we will be engaging the services of Cariri in respect of product testing. In the months of September and October, we will be focusing on intellectual property and copyright regulations to ensure that our persons have an opportunity to clearly define their brands and to secure market spaces. In November, we will be dealing with pre-funding training again, and in, also in November, we will be talking here, Madam Presiding Officer, about the establishment of a Christmas village, which will be the third in a series of activities by the Business Development Unit in Community Development, Enterprise Development, and Labor. Madam Presiding Officer, when I come back to the whole concept of the motion, which is that this House supports the continued efforts of the Tobago House of Assembly to equip our local entrepreneurs with adequate resources to identify, explore, and penetrate new markets, one has to have an appreciation for the fact in only two years we were able to establish five road markets on the island of Tobago, a tremendous success for our resident entrepreneurs and businessmen. We have gone to TIC in Trinidad twice, and as a result, it was the chief secretary under his visionary leadership who says, let's do something independent of TIC and give Trinidad an opportunity for Tobago to penetrate their markets through the roadshow, which is happening now as this house is in session. That isn't all. So much of information here. So much of info. We have so much to boast about. Madam Presiding Officer, if we think that that is all, we lie. As it pertains to the use of community facilities and the likes, we have ensured, Madam Presiding Officer, that we equip our community facilities with the infrastructure that is necessary for the communities to engage basic services by which they would be able to generate um, incomes, Madam Presiding Officer. In the last financial year, in the last fiscal year, we would have gone on to renovate and to, and, and to equip five community centers to ensure that persons have a space where they can be trained and where they can engage entrepreneurial skills and disciplines. Of the five, three, three have been equipped with an industrial kitchen to, to further and to advantage the opportunities which would be done from, from, from agro-processing and the likes. It brings me, Madam Presiding Officer, to the point that I am about to make now. If in truth and in fact, if in truth and in fact, first world economies benefit from industrialization, if in truth and in fact, first class economies have garnered certain benefits because they recognize that there must be a robust private sector to undergird the operations of economies. If in truth and in fact, first world countries have gone on to realize that the establishment of a creative class and an entrepreneurial class is important to buoy the economy, then I dare say 
that on the island of Tobago, Kelvin Charles and his administration has established a first class economy. Establish a first class economy. Remember, you have 30 seconds. How much? 30 seconds? Hold on, hold on, Madam President, officer. I thought you would have told me 30 minutes. 30 seconds seems advantageous. Thank you. And so, Madam Presiding Officer, one could understand and appreciate the call. <laughs> Member, your speaking time is up. Ten. I presume that you would like the motion standing in your name to be read? No. I'm no? I need, I need ten minutes. Members, the question... Yes, I beg being you. proposed according to the order paper, whereas this administration took the strategic decision to align the responsibilities of community development, enterprise development, and the empowerment of the labor force on the island under one division of the Tobago House of Assembly, and whereas enterprise development has been identified as a key strategic vehicle for empowering Tobagonians, building communities, and developing the island's economy. And whereas this administration has facilitated the acquisition of employable and entrepreneurial skills through a range of vocational skills programs and continues to invest in the establishment, development, and success of local businesses. Be it resolved that this House support the continued efforts of the Tobago House of Assembly to equip our local entrepreneurs with adequate resources to identify, explore, and penetrate new markets in order to maximize profitability and bolster the, uh, the, the island's economy. And be it further resolved that all sectors support the continuous trust of, by the administration to expand the private sector through the development of the entrepreneurial class. Minority Leader. Madam President Officer, it's time to give way to the Minority Councillor as I will speak further on. Yeah. Minority Councillor. Good afternoon, Madam Presiding Officer. Good afternoon to the other members of the House. And a special greeting to those who have joined us in the viewing gallery and those who may be listening uh, via the various social media options. It is certainly a pleasure this afternoon, Madam Presiding Officer, to stand before you and speak about the processes that are needed to develop Tobago. Um, it is really an honor to have the opportunity to speak critically about what we really need to do on this capital of paradise. The development that we've seen so far has been slow at times. At other times, it seems to be going backwards. But we must take every day as an opportunity to do something fresh, to do something new, and I'm glad we are here doing this today. Madam Presiding Officer, I do not intend to be lengthy as I intend to raise only three main topics. I will speak very briefly about what those of us on this side of the table sees the role of the government and there may be some similarities in how we view the role of the government. I will also speak about two specific methods that we are recommending used to help assist in that kind of development that we're hoping to see on the island. Madam Presiding Officer, many of us who got into politics 
did so because we genuinely want to help people. We genuinely want to see the lives of the people who we serve better. It is important, however, that we understand that the role of government is that to support those individuals. But it is probably more important that we understand that there are times as government we need to step back just a little and ensure that we do not overstep and that we do not compete with some of the same individuals who we are trying to assist. Therefore, Madam Presiding Officer, the role of government is to complement and not necessarily to complete. We need to provide, Madam Presiding Officer, the basic infrastructure that allows our citizens to live comfortably in their everyday lives, but we need to also provide some of the basic infrastructure that's needed to allow this business community to thrive. Yes, that includes some of the simple things that we traditionally think of governments doing, which include you know, paving the roads, which coincidentally happens election time, creating drains, having electricity, having water, providing hospitals, providing schools. Those types of things are what we traditionally think of government's responsibilities. But as it relates specifically to helping our communities develop, governments must also be responsible for setting up some of the rules and regulations that are needed to create the minimum standards for some of the goods and services that we are asking our private citizens to provide. For example, Madam Presiding Officer, for those who may be interested in food processing, because it's an easy example for us to think through the steps, the government needs to be very, very clear on what the minimum of food safety standards are. That is a basic minimum requirement. In addition to identifying those basic standards though, the government needs to also ensure that it facilitates, not necessarily provides specifically, but facilitates the process by which those who are in the private sector can reach and maintain those standards. And it may mean working closely with private sector to create the certification process or to create the labs that we may need to test the foods. If it is not readily available, then the government must do its due diligence to ensure, Madam Presiding Officer, that it provides those <coughs> situations, those mechanisms. So it provides the testing and it provides the certification that is needed. Madam Presiding Officer, this is critical because one of the things we as the Progressive Democratic Patriots frequently hear when we are chatting with people, particularly in this food processing area, is that we know that Tobago has the best when it comes to food. We are sweet hand. We can all agree with that. And the things that we produce are indeed some of the best. We know that when our friends and families come to visit, they tell us that our items are indeed the best. However, when those entrepreneurs venture to have those items move from off of just the shelves in Tobago to the shelves maybe in Trinidad and to the shelves internationally, they recognize that they come across a major major hindrance, which is we do not have on the ground as a set standard the food safety, whether it is HACCP, whether it's an ISO, whatever it is that's necessary to get those foods on the market internationally. We hear that it is extremely costly to get the necessary testing done. 
And that is why I was so happy when I heard the member speak about having Kariri come over. Because one of the things we understand is that, yes, that testing that Kariri does is extremely expensive. But I would like to put it on record that the testing that Kariri does is not a one of testing. And I think many of our entrepreneurs believe it is you do it once and that's fine without recognizing that it is something that needs to be repeated next year and the year after and the year after that. So even though they may have incorporated the cost for testing once, they did not really think that they needed to do it over and over and continually and continually for their products to stay on the market. Therefore, Madam Presiding Officer, it would be great if we set up something right here in Tobago, possibly with THTI, since they have a well-defined kitchen system, to work with Kariri to determine what is the best method of providing that kind of service continually on the island for those entrepreneurs that are interested in having their products tested and having them rolled out continually. Yes, we know that we have some of the best pepper sauce and many ball, but if we cannot get them onto the market, the world does not know that. Madam Presiding Officer, the second issue that I would like to touch on is one that relates to how states sponsor community development projects. Because how those projects are funded and managed influences how the communities are able to benefit from them directly. Currently, Madam Presiding Officer, what happens, as you may be full aware, is that each division within the Tobago House of Assembly gets funding to execute projects throughout the entire island under the purview of that division. Now, that may work perfectly for some of the larger scale capital projects. But unfortunately, because of how the THA is set up and how the Executive Council is set up, that kind of funding structure does not allow, Madam Presiding Officer, the average man on the ground to really be actively involved in the management or in, the, in deciding, for example, what projects they want done. Therefore, Madam Presiding Officer, we've heard complaints on the ground all the time that there may be simple projects that can be executed that really are the priority of the community. And those projects do not get completed or don't get executed because it just didn't come up. Or the flip side happens, Madam Presiding Officer, where we have projects that may not be the priority of the community or projects that may not be what the community thinks is in its best interest. And those projects get done, those projects get funded, those projects get executed. Madam Presiding Officer, the PDP, the Progressive Democratic Patriots, made a recommendation during the 2017 election in our PDP THA election mandate on page 26, where we speak about community funding. And it says, what we recommend is changing the budgetary policy to allow for standard budget allocations for every community. Community councils will be created and equipped to lead in the management of these community projects. The funding will be housed in the division with responsibility for community development, but the governing rules will be established within the division with responsibility for finance. In other words, Madam Presiding Officer, what the PDP proposed then is, in simple terms, to allow 
each community or to give each community an allocation. And let's just say it's a million dollars. So each community knows at the beginning of every fiscal year, there is a million dollars sitting, waiting for that community to use. No, Madam Presiding Officer, we are not going to just hand over the million dollars to anybody. As I said, it will be sitting within the division with responsibility for community development. What we will do, Madam Presiding Officer, however, is ensure that those community councils are revived and recreated and ensure that they are equipped with the necessary technical capacity to identify, Madam Presiding Officer, what the projects of that community needs to identify which are critical, which are priority, and then to allow them, Madam Presiding Officer, to execute those projects. So for example, if the Richmond community decides that it wants to create a water park within the Richmond Beach River area, Madam Presiding Officer, the Richmond Community Council would have an opportunity, have access to that $1 million, if that is the figure, to execute that project, Madam Presiding Officer. Using that model, we know that the politician, the area representative for that area, does not have to go cap in hand begging any other person for monies to do project in their area because that money is already allocated for that community. What it also does, Madam Presiding Officer, is improve the general capacity of the community by ensuring that within each community, there are people who have real hardcore technical skills to run and manage projects. What it also does, Madam Presiding Officer, is ensure that there is equitable distribution of the resources of the island. Therefore, those people who do construction, who are from within the Richmond, Bell Garden, Glamorgan area, would be the ones benefiting from the construction that is happening. It means that the hardware in that area would be the one making the money from that area. It means that the lady who sells juice and pie has a specific place to go and sell her juice and pie because this construction is happening in that community. Madam Presiding Officer, it means that each individual community sees the development that is happening in its community, has a direct say in what development happens in its community, and can see every single year what is happening, how it was spent, where it was spent, and feels that it is actively a part of how the community develops. Madam Presiding Officer, that was just one of the many ideas of the progressive democratic patriots throughout the last election season. And dare I say, Madam Presiding Officer, that when the people of Tobago gives us the opportunity to manage this Tobago House of Assembly, that will be one of the things that we execute. Madam Presiding Officer, the final thing, and as I said, I was going to be very, very brief. The final issue that I would like to raise helps with community development, yes, but it also helps with the expanding of the private sector within Tobago. And I would again go to the mandate of the Progressive Democratic Patriots, page 13, where we discuss financing. And it includes the Tobago House of Assembly taking up its responsibility to create or to establish 
what is known as a Tobago National Development Bank, whose main stakeholders, of course, are the THA, the Tobago Cooperatives, and the Tobagonian Diaspora. Madam Presiding Officer, let me be clear. The PDP was very precise in how we envisioned this development bank. And we were very specific in the name that we chose. We said specifically that it would be a Tobago National Development Bank because we are speaking directly to the nation of Tobago. And let me make that clear. This is not to be confused, Madam Presiding Officer, with the island of Tobago. It is not to be confused with the residents of Tobago. It is not to be confused with the nation state that is known as Trinidad and Tobago. But Madam Presiding Officer, we specifically say Tobago National, because as outlined in the Oxford Dictionary, the word nation can mean a large body of people united by common descent, history, culture, or language. This means, Madam Presiding Officer, that when we speak about this national development back, we are speaking and we are including Tobagonians, people who know in their heart and soul that they are Tobagonians, but may not be residing on the island of Tobago. We are speaking about individuals who may be very successful in Trinidad, in the Caribbean, in the United States, or anywhere else. And they now have an opportunity because they are going to be stakeholders within this development bank they have an opportunity to be investors. They have an opportunity to contribute directly. And those who are benefiting will be those Tobagonians who are here who need the kind of support that a development bank provides. And let, as we are talking about a development bank, Madam Presiding Officer, we know that development banks tend to be a little more user-friendly. They tend to be a little less rigid with their borrowing rules and requirements. According to the World Bank, in a 2017 blog, Madam Presiding Officer, it includes the new role of the, Tobago Deve of the General Development Bank within this era as doing several things. And I would only highlight a few of those things, Madam Presiding Officer. And that is to give us a, an idea, give us context of why we think this development bank is what is needed to assist our local entrepreneurs to get to the level that we know they can get to. Some of the roles, one, it leaves the funding of commercially viable and quote-unquote safe projects to the traditional private sector banks. So it allows those who've probably been established for a while, who can meet all of the requirements of the traditional banks to go to those banks. That's fine. But it focuses on less commercially viable initiatives that still yield significant development results. So those that may not be able to meet the hard core requirements of the traditional private sector banks can go to this development bank and do what is necessary because the requirements are not as rigid. We all know about the Agricultural Development Bank and the way that functions compared to other banks. Three, Madam Presiding Officer, it allows us to find innovative ways to crowd in private capital, including by developing credit guarantee schemes, credit enhancements on the capital market in instruments, or, private or matching 
private equity funds. That's an option. It assists in supporting the development of an ecosystem of factoring, leasing, and micro, small, and medium enterprise finance companies through the provision of stable funding resources via credit lines. And these are resources that may not be available to these MSMEs within the traditional banking system. It provides the private sector, and this is critical, with incentives to take more responsibility for operations and maintain long-term finance for infrastructure projects. So when we are asking the private sector to come in and to, 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 to invest, it's because this development bank can also provide incentives to those private, private sector individuals. And the final thing, Madam Presiding Officer, is that it solves many of our public-private coordination problems, which increase the social returns of investment projects in cases where the social returns exceed the private returns. And the private returns aren't sufficient to really induce investment. What this means, Madam Presiding Officer, is that because we know of the social good that will happen as a result of this project getting off the ground, even though the benefit, the financial, the profit that we would normally look at would not come immediately, this gives an opportunity for those projects to get off of the ground because we know of the social benefits that they would have. Simple projects that fund programs geared towards women, children, those kinds of projects that we know could assist an entire family to lift up but may not be as profitable on paper. Those are the kinds of projects that a development bank can assist with. Right. Madam Presiding Officer, yes, the Tobago National Development Bank will revolutionize the financing options for individuals and companies that have fantastic ideas, but who will not necessarily meet the strict requirements of the current financial institutions that give business loans. Granted, Madam Presiding Officer, some of these same financial institutions would happily and readily give our Tobagonians $100,000 to purchase a car or to keep a harvest. Yes, but they will not give that same $100,000 to the same person if they tell them it is going to start a business. But Madam Presiding Officer, that's another issue. Madam Presiding Officer, the Tobago National Development Bank will be an ideal vehicle for sourcing funding from successful Tobagonians outside of Trinidad and Tobago who are looking for that link, who are looking for an opportunity to give back directly to the development of the island. Madam Presiding Officer, that bank would also help in ensuring that, let me step back a little bit, one of the things that development banks also work very closely with, it is because they understand that the technical capacity of some of the people who, 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 who borrow from them are not as great as they should be, they could spend some time creating or, or, or ensuring that that capacity is built. Technical capacity in areas of product development, marketing, and so forth. Madam Presiding Officer, as I wrap up, the Minority Council and the Progressive Democratic Patriots firmly believes that if the Tobago House of Assembly serious, seriously thinks about these issues, plans and executes strategies that are rooted in science 
and take into consideration the local culture of our Tobago population, we can indeed equip our local entrepreneurs with adequate resources to identify, explore, and penetrate new markets in order to maximize profitability and bolster the island's economy. And we can also expand the private sector through the development of the entrepreneurial class. The THA, though Madam Presiding Officer, has to be one with vision, one that understands the needs of Tobago, one that understands how economy works, and one that is willing to put Tobago and Tobagonians first for that to happen. Madam Presiding Officer, the people of Tobago have given the People's National Movement 18 whole years Whoa. to fulfill those promises. Whoa. And it has failed miserably. Whoa. It is time, Madam Presiding Officer, for the people of Tobago to give the progressive democratic patriots, to give my colleagues and I an opportunity to execute these and many of the other projects that we have so well thought of. Right. Because this is what Madam Presiding Officer Tobago needs to really become the developed status that it needs to be. Madam Presiding Officer, Tobago, it is time. Thank you. Deputy Chief Secretary and Secretary of Finance and the Economy. Madam Presiding Officer, thank you. And thank you for allowing me the opportunity to contribute to this important motion. And this motion, Madam Presiding Officer, seeks to enlist the support of all members of the House as it relates to various initiatives of the assembly to equip and, ex and continue our plans and program for the expansion and the development of the Tobago private sector and as well the Tobago entrepreneurial class. Additionally, Madam Presiding Officer, this motion also seeks to equip the Tobago private sector with the necessary resources and skills that are required to identify, explore, and penetrate new markets, thereby bolstering the Tobago economy. And uh, Madam Presiding Officer, let me start off first on a congratulatory note by saying well done to my colleague, Assemblyman Shomari Hector for piloting this motion at this time. And as the, while he is deputizing for his secretary, let me say that he, he <laughs> a job well done, Madam Presiding Officer. And let me again congratulate him for piloting this motion. And as we look to advance the silence development. I'm presiding officer, this motion is also important because it highlights the critical role of the private sector as an engine of growth, as an engine of e economic activity um, in the Tobago economy. And it also brings into focus the various initiatives of this administration since um, coming, assuming the helm of the assembly in 2001, and more specifically, if we narrow the, narrow the range of focus, the range of activity since coming into office in January of 2017, as we seek to continue our diversification efforts and to develop a Tobago indigenous entrepreneurial class 
Well, Madam Presiding Officer, you know, I have a famous saying that everything rises and falls on leadership. And let me start off by com commending the Honorable Chief Secretary for his vision and his leadership in this regard. Because, Madam Presiding Officer, I had the opportunity back then, I believe it was 2009, to craft the policy document that would guide the Executive Council note for the establishment of the Enterprise Assistant Assistance Grant Program. And the, the, the thinking then was, how do we encourage and stimulate community entrepreneurship at the micro, meso, and the, 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 so that the person in the community would be interested in getting into business, getting into entrepreneurship, and how additionally we can encourage our NGOs, our community-based organizations, our faith-based organizations, and how could we get them excited about getting into business, Madam Presiding Officer, and since then, we created the Enterprise Assistance Grant Program, which came on the heels a couple years after, about six or seven or so years after the establishment of the Enterprise Assistance Fund. And what the Honorable Chief Secretary has done by merging the business development unit with community development is to, to stimulate entrepreneurial activity at the community level, Madam Presiding Officer. And all of Tobago should be proud of that, that we have a Chief Secretary who came, he saw and he had a vision, and that vision is being realized today. And I believe, Madam Presiding Officer, Tobago training and to merge the provision of seed capital for businesses to start so that they can have that much needed startup capital. Because we saw the challenge, Madam Presiding Officer, is that a new phenomenon where the banking sector was not making available to the small man, the micro entrepreneur, the seed capital. Because their business is about banking, their business is about making profits, their business is about giving their shareholders return on their investment and increasing their share, shareholders' values. So we took a decision then, Madam Presiding Officer, as a responsible administration to ensure that as part of our economic diversification policy and as part of the process to stimulate community entrepreneurship, that we would pro and establish the Enterprise Assistance Grant Program to give persons funding up to $25,000 in addition to the Enterprise Assistance Fund. And let me say, Madam Presiding Officer, the rest is history. And some of the persons we have in businesses today thank the Tobago House of Assembly, thank us wholeheartedly for establishing these two programs because without them, they would have never had the opportunity to get into business and Madam Presiding Officer to realize their dreams. And we have had a number of success stories, Madam Presiding Officer, and I will highlight a couple of them during my presentation. But Madam Presiding Officer, when I, 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 I came into the, the chamber this, mo this evening with, with muted expectation, I, I don't want to have my emotions, you know, hurt. I mean, as my aunt will tell me, don't play with people's emotions. So I, I, did, I came expecting a good presentation from my colleague and my, my fellow colleagues, but I came with muted expectation wanting to know what they... The, the, the members opposite, what would be their contribution? So, one was a Tobago, de um, a Tobago Development Bank, and so on. And 
That's why I always ask, Madam Presiding Officer, when, you, when you're making a quotation, when you're referencing other person's ideas, when you're stealing other person, sorry, when you're quoting from other persons, when you're referencing other person's ideas, that you give them credit. Now, the Tobago Development Bank is not a new phenomenon. This was posited right in this honorable house by the late honorable Dr. Anselm London, former Secretary for Finance and Enterprise Development. Because what we saw then, looking at the Tobago environment, that what, there was a need for intervention by the assembly, not just to provide the enabling environment, but to assist in the mobilization and the accumulation of capital to assist the private sector to develop and expand. So while we don't have, Madam Presiding Officer, under one umbrella, a Tobago Development Bank, if the member would be honest, and some of the points that she raised and, and the recommendations that she gave, if she would look honestly and dispassionately, she would see a number of those elements in train. In addition to the Enterprise Assistance Fund, the Enterprise um, Assistance Grant Program, and the Tobago Venture Capital Equity Fund Limited, we have made the provision to support private sector expansion. And what we want is honest, objective recommendations and give credit to where it is due. We are on the right track. We have a vision for this island guided by policy documents guiding our affairs, and we are in consultation with the people of Tobago and the various sectors crafting and pulling together the necessary economic, socioeconomic planning documents that would advance this island's development. Madam Presiding Officer, we're not sleeping. And let me say that Tobagonians are very wise, very smart, very intelligent people. You see, they didn't put this island's development into the hands of the caring, visionary people's national movement by chance. They have never left their development to chance. So when they saw a manifesto which told them that the focus was to build a golf course in Studley Park and the focus was to build an airport in Roxborough, I know the Tobago people smarter than that because they would have seen consistency over the years in managing their affairs. They'd have seen consistency in leadership in guiding the affairs of the island. And based on our track record of delivery and transforming and the transformation of Tobago, the people of Tobago had no choice in 2017 but to put this island's development back into the hands of the People's National Movement. And come January 2021, they will put their, they will entrust this island's development again into the hands of the People's National Movement. So, Madam Presiding Officer, that aside, when we look at the Tobago economy, Madam Presiding Officer, and when we continue as part of our annual GDP exercise and we continue to review the structure of the Tobago economy, what we have seen is that the services sector comprises or makes up approximately 90% of the island's GDP. And it is well known, Madam Presiding Officer, that the services sector is susceptible to international shocks and uh, as we have seen, and to the vagaries of the international environment, we, we saw this during the 20, 2008, 2009 economic, global economic crisis. And uh, this is something that we are treating with. Additionally, the data also suggests that the services sector, that of the services sector, general government activity the financial and tourism sectors that they contribute overwhelmingly to, the, to, to Tobago's GDP. In addition, Madam Presiding Officer, 
the latest data from the Central Statistical Office for the last quarter of 2017 suggests that the state sector employs approximately 58% of the Tobago labor force with the private sector employing 42%. And Madam Presiding Officer, that is significant because we continue hearing that the Tobago, that government continues to employ over 60, 61%. So that we are seeing that some of the policy initiatives in, that we have put in place are now bearing fruit and that number continues to decline. Madam Presiding Officer, what our macroeconomic data is also suggesting is that we still have significant work to do in our diversification efforts of the Tobago economy. We still have a lot of work to do in terms of developing a robust indigenous business class in Tobago, and we still have a lot of work to do in developing a very strong, resilient, and uh, vibrant private sector, Madam Presiding Officer. But Madam Presiding Officer, what is diversification? And every time I bring up this word, my father would remind me of his days sitting in Lloyd's best class and echoing that, the, that this diversification word and the diversification efforts is something that, you know, is something that will take time. It's something which it speaks about the structural transformation of the economy. And Madam Presiding Officer, this is not an easy feat to achieve, and this will require substantial effort, and it will also require significant investment. And by its, by its nature, Madam Presiding Officer, Diversification takes a very long time. And that's why you have to be careful when persons come selling wares, telling you it's easy to do, it's easy to achieve. We could do it like, you know, it's like a flash in the pan. It's, it, it's something that will magically appear. No, Madam Presiding Officer. If we look at all the societies, if you look at China, if you look at India, if you look at Singapore, all the countries that are reference points in terms of, of, of economic diversification, if we look at them, what they had to do, it was over time and it required significant investment. If we look at some of the oil rich countries, um, Qatar, as I liked and as my, my my friend on the opposite side is also like to refer to them. It took, and as well now, it took again significant capital and the political will to execute it. Because what diversification says is that we are moving, we are not depending on one primary source of revenue for the development of our economy and we are not depending on one primary source for sustained development. So Madam Presiding Officer, if we look at what applies and the benchmarks internationally, and if I was hoping that there would be sober reflection and sober analysis of the road that we have traveled since 2001, Madam Presiding Officer, my colleague on the, and my colleagues opposite would agree that we have been doing something right. But Madam Presiding Officer, this long-term process called diversification requires a concerted effort and a commitment of all stakeholders. For diversification to occur in any meaningful and sustainable manner, we need sincere and trusting collaborations and partnerships with the private sector, 
workers, unions, and the state. We need a private sector who will be continuously investing in research and development so that they're able to identify new products, processes, and services that have a marketable value on a sustainable basis. We need workers who possess the necessary training and skills to ensure that they are productive as they can be in order to produce goods and services that are competitive on the regional and international markets. And Madam Presiding Officer, we in the Tobago House of Assembly as the government and state in this island, we need to provide the enabling environment, the enabling ecosystems to facilitate the development of these products and services. So Madam Presiding Officer, when you ask the question, what we have done, what we are doing, Madam Presiding Officer, those questions are easily answered. And Madam, Madam Presiding Officer, for, sus, for our economic diversification to take place again in any meaningful way, the private sector, they must be at the forefront and they must be the drivers of this process. And uh, in all major developing and developed societies, Madam Presiding Officer, it is the private sector that is the engine of growth. The empirical evidence around the world suggests that countries that were successful in diversifying their economies had the private sector playing a critical role as the engine of growth and the state playing the role of facilitator in the transformation process. It is against this backdrop, Madam Presiding Officer, that we view the various initiatives of the Assembly and this administration to stimulate private sector development on the island. And Madam Presiding Officer, I would have outlined a couple before. And we spoke about, about BDO and venture capital. And taken together, Madam Presiding Officer, we invested over $100 million to date in supporting private sector development, in supporting entrepreneurial development, and ensuring as well that to Begonians who were desirous of getting into business, that they had the means and they had the necessary supporting and enabling environment. Because in 2009 as well, Madam Presiding Officer, when we started the Enterprise Assistance Grant Program, what we also did as an administration was to restructure the business development unit to ensure that we, would, we were not just doling out money and good business ideas, but we provided the enabling an environment where we would be holding the hands of entrepreneurs and grant and loan recipients, and that we were providing the necessary hands-on training and business, business support to give their business enterprise a greater chance of success. Because we're following the numbers. When we look at the international benchmarks, they insisted that we should put in a failure rate in terms of, of the program and not be daunted by the fact. And if you were to parallel what we are doing with venture capital companies abroad, they sometimes invest in 10 companies, but sometimes the seven out of the 10 may flop, but the three, the three out of the 10 give, will give the VC com, com, company so much success that the profits, um, the growth of the company in terms of equity and value will trump the investment in the other sevens. So we are not daunted, 
Madam Presiding Officer, by what we have, some of the challenges. But more importantly, Madam Presiding Officer, we are excited given the fact that some of the businesses that we have invested in, that they have shown so much resilience during the challenging economic periods, 2008 to 2009, that they are now holding their own and standing on their feet as established businesses here in the Tobago environment, Madam Presiding Officer. So in addition to giving them the necessary grant funding, in addition to giving them the necessary support and putting the necessary support structures, Madam Presiding Officer, what we have been also doing to assist in stimulating entrepreneurial activities is also by providing capacity enhancement training to entrepreneurs and prospective entrepreneurs, Madam Presiding Officer. And Madam Presiding Officer, if you look at our target groups, they are young. And I attend some of these seminars and I'm impressed by the number of young persons who are encouraged and excited to get into business, Madam Presiding Officer. I'm also excited, excited about the number of um, young women and females who are also looking not just for a, a J-O-B or a W-K, but they are looking to get into entrepreneurship. They are serious about putting their skills and training to use. And Madam Presiding Officer, what we are seeing is the marrying of our human capital development program if it's through the Youth and Advice for Success program, through the Department of Advancing and Advisory Services, through our World of Work program at the Division of, of, of Education, Division of Youth Affairs, sorry. And we're seeing that all these programs and the, the persons graduating, that they are looking to get into business and they're looking to get into entrepreneurship. And what I'm also pleased about they are excited about a Tobago House of Assembly who is responsible enough, who is forward-looking enough to ensure that we make provision for them through our loan and grant programs, in, even in the midst of these challenging economic times, Madam Presiding Officer, and we are grateful for that. In addition to the training, in addition to the, to the, to the funding, the provision of funding, Madam Presiding Officer, we are also heartened by the fact that we continue to provide the necessary support for Tobago entrepreneurs to penetrate national, regional, and international markets, Madam Presiding Officer. Our export readiness training continues to, to bear fruit, Madam Presiding Officer. Our assistance to entrepreneurs to participate in TIC over the years continues to bear fruit. So when you go down to, to, to Hilo, you're in Trinidad, you're feeling for um, not left hand dumpling, but frozen dumpling, Madam Presiding Officer. You're feeling to eat a Tobago ice cream. You're feeling for that Tobago product that you love. Through our concerted efforts over the years, Tobago's products are now on some of the major shelves in high, low, true value, or extra foods, Madam Presiding Officer. And that is a result of the work of this administration. In addition, Madam Presiding Officer, we go to TIC this year, and uh, we're celebrating 20 years, Madam Presiding Officer. TIC celebrating 20 years this year. And uh, we have 11 entrepreneurs who will be participating again at this year's TIC, Madam Presiding Officer, and we are excited about that. Madam Presiding Officer, in addition to TIC, we have taken entrepreneurs to New York, to the New York Fancy Food Show. We have made, given assistance to our entrepreneurs to have their products exhibited in the UK annually. Um, in collaboration with the UK High Commission through um, their trade fair and mission. We have also hosted several missions to the, the US, to Miami, 
and we've hosted discussions with the Greater Industry of Chamber of Industry and Commerce. And this year, we are taking, we are taking entrepreneurs and their products with us to Cuba. And it was just um, yesterday we were considering at the Executive Council support for one of our entrepreneurs who, through our collaboration with the U.S. Embassy, he was partnering with the Nes National Restaurant Association Exposition. So we are doing what is necessary, not just to ensure that we give entrepreneurs the necessary support to start their businesses. We also assist them in handholding and taking their businesses to the next level so that they can export, so that they can realize a market that is not limited just to the 63,000 Tobagonians. Now, will they be limited to the, to the Trinidad market of approximately 1.3 million persons, but they can tap into the regional market and to the international diaspora market, Madam Presiding Officer. Additionally, through the Venture Capital Program, we have assisted three businesses to date, and we are continually evaluating other programs, other business ventures, Madam Presiding Officer, who, without the help of the to big House of Assembly, will still be a dream, a wish, but now we can say, because of the Assembly, their vision, their dreams are now a reality. Also, Madam Presiding Officer, we invested in, in the Covico Industrial and Business Park to provide important real estate um, factory space for Tobagonians to establish their businesses. And let me just thank the, the board of... Remember, your speaking time has expired. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. I move that the speaking time of the member be extended by a full of 10 minutes. The question is that the speaking time for the honorable member be extended by a further 10 minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? <coughs> member, your speaking time has been extended by a further 10 minutes. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. Madam Presiding Officer, some of the challenges that we face is that we have a risk of this private sector. And uh, what we have to look at as well, Madam Presiding Officer, we have to look at some of the challenges that we continue to face. And I want to say that this administration, we are ready, we are responsible, and we are prepared to continue our support to ensure that the Tobago private sector is expanded. With these few words, Madam Presiding Officer, I thank you. Minority Leader. Assemblyman, um, secre Assistant Secretary in the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor. to provide the people of Tobago with the much needed support to be able to identify, explore, and penetrate new markets. But I must bring clarity to one of the points in particular that was raised by the minority councillor who argued or who posits that it is time to give 
the Minority Council and the PDP an opportunity. I dare say that there are a few who would have made a little mistake and give them an opportunity to voice their dissenting views, but that will not happen again because the people of Tobago are a wiser people because of good stewardship and proper governance <laughs> by this PNM Red administration. And so, Madam Presiding Officer, having had respect for all that was said, and having had respect for the views of the people of Tobago, it gives me a great deal of honor to read this motion in the House, seeking the support of members on my side and opposite. And the motion reads, whereas this administration took the strategic decision to align the responsibility of community development, enterprise development, and the empowerment of the labor force of the island under one division of the Tobago House of Assembly, and whereas enterprise development has been identified as a key strategic vehicle for empowering Tobagonians, building communities, and developing the island's economy, and whereas this administration has facilitated the acquisition of employable and entrepreneurial skills through a range of vocation skills programs and continues to invest in the establishment, development, and success of local businesses, be it resolved that this House supports the continued efforts of the Tobago House of Assembly to equip our local entrepreneurs with adequate resources to identify, explore, and penetrate new markets in order to maximize profitability and bolster the island's economy, and be it further resolved that all sectors support the continuous thrust by the administration to expand the private sector through the development of the entrepreneurial class. I beg to move. Members, the question put, whereas this administration took the strategic decision to align the responsibilities of community development, enterprise development, and the empowerment of the labor force on the island under one division of the Tobago House of Assembly, and whereas enterprise development has been identified as a key strategic vehicle for empowering Tobagonians, building communities, and developing the island's economy, and whereas this administration has facilitated the acquisition of employable and entrepreneurial skills through a range of vocational skill programs and continues to invest in the establishment, development, and success of local businesses, be it resolved that this House support the continued efforts of the Tobago House of Assembly to equip our local entrepreneurs with adequate resources to identify, explore, and penetrate new markets in order to maximize profitability and bolster the island's economy. And be it further resolved that all sectors support the continuous thrust by the administration to expand the private sector through the development of the entrepreneurial class. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Any against? Any abstaining? Eyes have it. This motion is now carried. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. I move that this house now stand adjourned and need to be fixed. Honorable members, the question is that this house now stand adjourned for a date to be fixed. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? The House stand adjourned for a date to be fixed.
Amen. Let's stay away. Let's stay away. I do what is necessary. The point was well made. The point was well made.